Hi, Broadcast Asia. My name is Ashwin Naveen. I'm currently CEO of Samba TV. Had the great fortune of uh, also serving as BitTorrent's co-founder and COO for its early existence. Well, the state of piracy today is quite interesting. We know um, the availability of content is quite great anywhere in the world uh, where you have internet access. Peer-to-peer um, -peer networks allow you to get what you want, and that's and in fact made content much more available than ever before in history. Uh, what we've observed over the last decade is that the amount of consumption of video and audio is greater than ever before. You've got it uh, whatever you want, when you want it, and you can take it wherever you want to go. And so that's an amazing thing from a creator's perspective. It's never been easier to reach consumers with your creativity. Um, so as a sort of backdrop for creativity, it's pretty exciting. Now the business model of uh, content has always been built around scarcity. You know, how do I um, take a piece of content and make it scarce in order to increase the price of it or build a value proposition around something that's very expensive to create, like a, a major movie that might take $100 million to produce. The way I get my money back is by making it available only through certain types of business models like movie theaters or VOD subscriptions or Blu-ray discs. Now that business model is under attack as we know because uh, scarcity is no longer a viable uh, mechanism to prevent people from getting access to your content. And uh, that's because piracy has made content available everywhere. Now in order for the industry to innovate and evolve in an environment where there are no barriers, there are no walls, there's no more scarcity, is to make the experience better. Uh, and what we've seen in the US where media companies have been using technology to create new business models is that piracy is actually in decline. My friends at BitTorrent tell me that this year there are 30% fewer users of BitTorrent in the United States this year versus last year. Why? Well, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Spotify, all make great content available for an unlimited amount of usage for a monthly fee. Um, and truth be told, the experience for streaming through one of these services is actually better than hunting around torrent sites looking for the right version of the video that you're trying to download, make sure that it's dubbed and subtitled the way you want it to be and actually in decent audio quality. Not so easy and definitely much more time consuming than what you get from one of the, uh, the great streaming services that are out there. Well, torrenting uh, will actually exist forever. It's sort of like one of those things you expect to survive nuclear wars uh, and, and uh, holocaust uh, just because um, there'll always be something that a service like Netflix or Amazon won't be able to get from the movie studios and so um, the, the main issue is when people still want to implement scarcity the torrent sites will have a vibrant model that, that uh, you know eliminates that scarcity Secondly, um, there's parts of the world which get content way too late. You know, my friends in Australia tell me that sometimes they're watching TV shows a month after we'll watch them in the US because it takes a long time for the businesses to get a hold of the, the content through their business partners. Um, and then of course, there's other parts of the world where disposable income isn't that high and the legitimate movie or content industry will take some time to scale down to meet the market clearing price of what you know, a consumer in Southeast Asia may be willing to pay. Um, so in these situations, uh, torrenting or other forms of peer-to-peer -peer delivery will still be alive and well. Now, most people in the media industry will never admit this. There are, in fact, benefits to piracy. Um, we've seen in industries like software, video games, adult video, um, that, you know, publishers, creators are actually willing to tolerate piracy in order to acculturate uh, people to a form of expression or uh, a product that they have available, which is difficult to bring to market in certain parts of the world. And what they would like to do is to build taste, to build preference for their, their product, where maybe a legitimate distribution model can't reach every consumer. Uh, where piracy allows you to reach that consumer where no other opportunity exists or market clearing price does not seem available, Piracy can be very good. And uh, we've heard people, you know, very senior in the television industry, even in the US, actually say publicly that um, the television industry and the way that content gets valued today in the legitimate way is very limited, in that 
broadcasters only get valued for the eyeballs they can reach within three days of when the broadcast happens. And everything after three days is actually a zero. So if piracy is able to start to build a relationship with people outside of that three-day window, maybe they'll come back into the three-day window once they start to like your program or like your content, and then you can start to get paid. So it's not a, a, a simple answer to say that piracy is all bad or all good. In fact, there are many benefits that, uh, that major businesses are seeing today. I've always believed that the only way to beat piracy is to compete with piracy. Lawyers will not stop piracy. Um, it's been tried, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars have gone into lawsuits in the United States and Europe and even other parts of the world, but it's never stamped out. It's never successfully defeated piracy. The only thing that can beat piracy is a better experience, to treat it like a competitor. And the fact is that what we've seen in the US is that piracy can be beaten with a better product. You know, a good friend of mine who started Hulu actually told me that the worst business partner for any company, and the startup probably the most, the perfect example, is a, as a monopolist. A monopolist doesn't treat uh, a partner very well because they feel, behold, they feel like they've got a monopoly. And a copyright holder is a monopoly on that copyright. So um, the media business is basically stuck until they can all agree on a common model and a common set of partners uh, they won't be able to defeat piracy as quickly as they would like to. 15 years of experience in the digital media industry, including four years where I was COO uh, of BitTorrent, you know, I definitely learned a lot. And one thing that we can all agree upon is that people are consuming content in new, unpredictable, and fascinating ways. In ways that don't fall into the traditional behaviors that the media companies have been able to capitalize on for the last 50, 60 years. And so when we started our company Samba, uh, we basically said, let's take inventory of the way that people are consuming content today and try to help the media companies adapt to these new behaviors, to create data sets and analytics around what are you know, the behavior patterns that millennials have and how do they compare to you know, their parents and grandparents? And how do we, they wanna reach consumers on all these new platforms and measure the impact of that consumption? Um, with Samba, we've been able to get the trust of the entertainment industry and advertisers and broadcasters to basically say, all right, there's a new form of analytics that are necessary to adapt. And many media companies today are actually relying on Samba to create the insight uh, that they need to create new business models to address the new landscape.